आज क्या पढ़ते हैं बिलोरुबीन जॉइंडस व्हाट इज जॉइंडस यू नो दैट बिलोरुबीन मेनली प्रोड्यूस व्हाट मेनली प्रोड्यूस प्रोड्यूस ड्यूरिंग ब्रेकिंग डाउन ऑफ हीमोग्लोबिन एंड अदर हीमोप्रोटीन यू नो दैट बिलोरुबीन इज अ व्हाट इज अ हाईली टॉक्सिक मॉलिक्यूल व्हिच इज कंस्टेंटली प्रोड्यूस बाय द बॉडी when rbc are breaking down when hemoglobin are breaking down what happen this toxic molecule uh, is normally produce 0.2 to 0.3 g per dl so this toxic molecule should push out of the body in a very very efficient manner okay you know that what's the normal uh, what's the normal level of bilirubin at 0. 2.2 टू carrots if we lead uh, it may be lead to hyperbilirubinia so it's not mean that it is jointus for jointus minimum there is need of uh, there is need 2.5 ml gram per dl or there is increased level of hyper uh, bilirubin is more than 2.5 gram per dl or 2.5 gram per dl so the observer If the bilirubin level is 2.5 gram per dl, so the observer can identify the yellow coloration on the mucus lining, the yellow coloration on the skin, yellow coloration on the sclera. And so, and, and, and so also understand, also understand. So this condition is known as jointus. Okay, this condition is known as jointus. 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 Not very very mild hyperbilirubin is not jointus. minimum for uh jointers there is need of 2.5 g or greater than 2.5 okay then uh, now what's the yellow coloration of sclera is known as yellow coloration of the sclera is known as ecteras it is due to hyperbilirubinia bilirubinemia okay secondly what's the what's the reason that the ecteras Uh, as domain domainly or the observer can uh, identify easily the yellow coloration on the sclera the first reason is that it is white in color and the second reason is that the scleral connective tissue allow to bind the high amount of bilirubin so at early stage the yellow coloration is dominantly as dominantly appear on the scleral side okay these two reasons lead to ecteras what is cholestasis what is cholestasis what is cholestasis cholestasis mean the impairment of bilirubin you know that what is cholestasis it is a impairment of bilirubin you know that in the bile there is three major thing cholesterol bilirubin and bile salt is present bile salt is present is present when there is obstruction in the bilary canuliculi system so by the obstruction of bilary canuliculi system the bile salt cholesterol and bilirubin is directly regurgitated into your circulation so if these three things are high are high in level so this condition is known as cholestasis this condition is known as cholestasis but hyper in hyper bilirubin or in jointus we only concentrate on level of bilirubin level but sometime what happen these three things are increased due to what reason due to any uh, bilaric any uh, obstruction obstruction at any level of bilaric nuclei system so it may lead to increased level of these three things bile salt cholesterol and bilirubin so this condition is known as cholestasis cholestasis you know that 
<coughs> how the bilirubin? First of all, we talk about the bilirubin. How the bilirubin is is formed? Bilirubin. Kis tarah mathe? How bilirubin should thrown out of the body? How bilirubin is carried into circulation? How bilirubin in which form it appear in the fecal matter? And in which form bilirubin is appear in the urinary urinary system or urine? You know that major source of bilirubin is breaking down of RBC. Breaking down of RBC. Hmm. Let's suppose we talk about one RBC being produced by being produced by your hepatocyte cell. Uh, <clears throat> when you know that in one twenty days, RBC is RBC is old and it loses elasticity. So nature has produced. A graveyard for phagocytos. This old RBC. What's the graveyard? Graveyard of RBC for phagocytosis process. It is spleen. You know that there are two types of hemolysis occur. One is intravascular. Second one is extravascular. In the normal person, there is 10 percent, five to 10 percent hemolysis occur in intravascular. Intravascular hemolysis occur in uh, hemolysis occur uh, of the immature RBC when there is some reason maybe there is deficiency of vitamin B12 deficiency may also lead to hemolysis, intravascular hemolysis occur, such as per, per, pernicious anemia. In pernicious anemia, there is 80 to 90 percent hemolysis occur intravascular, and also some type of any hemolytic anemia. In hemolytic anemia, also there is intravascular hemolysis occur. So, this person not survive well. For in a healthy person, the hemolysis. 80 to 90 percent hemolysis occur is extravascular. Extravascular when the hemolysis occur in the spleen. So when RBC is is or is loose is, uh, elasticity. So so this RBC will stuck uh, to the narrow circulation of the cord or bell root of the spleen. Cord of cord of bell root of the spleen and the neighboring RBC will take up the this RBC and phagocytose. You know that this when RBC is enter into your when this RBC enter into what enter into the uh, taken up by the phagocyte pego, sorry macrophage. This will digest. If the membrane is digest, so you know that membrane is formed from lipid and protein. This lipid will uh, will convert into free fatty acid. Now this will go into circulation. Now this protein will go into will will convert into amino acid, and it will go into your circulation. Now the cytoplasm of the RBC will also is a type of protein which is also digested. It will also convert into amino acid. It will also go into your circulation. Now this is now what what thing is new? Live here. What is what thing is live here? Hemoglobin molecule. If this globin molecule is digested, so it will also as the type of protein it will also convert into amino acid, and this amino acid will go into your circulation. What thing live here? Only hem. Only hem protein live here. Now this hem protein will digested by type of enzyme which is known as hem oxygenase. What is known as hem oxygenase enzyme. Hem oxygenase enzyme will digest this hem protein into two things. One is ferrous iron and the second one is beriberidine. Beriberidine molecule. Now this ferrous molecule will take up by type of enzyme which is known as apoferritin. What is the name of this protein? Epoperitin. Epoperitin. Epo and epoperitin will convert this this iron into peritin. Now this peritin will make many peritin isomer will accumulate it. So it will make the polymer. Polymer means many parts of the peritin. Pe protein peritin means iron. This is iron, it will be like this. This iron will be the many isomer will be accumulated here, and the, this condition is known as hemocedrine. Hemocedrine, the polymer of the peritin peritin molecule is known as 
hemocerdrin when this hemocerdrin when increased from normal level but yet it not damage your tissue or cell this condition is known as hemocerdrosis hemo hemocerdrosis but when this peritin is abnormally high and it start to damage your tissue it may damage your liver it may damage your spleen it may damage your other tissue also this condition is known as hemo chromatosis this condition is known as hemo hemochromatosis this condition is known as hemo chromatosis hemochromatosis now this bilirubin will convert into berry bilirubin by special type enzyme which is known as bilirubin reductase enzyme bilirubin reductase enzyme bilirubin reductase enzyme will convert the bilirubin into bilirubin now this bilirubin will come into circulation in which form it will come into circulation this is unconjugated form and unconjugated bilirubin mean it is lipid soluble bilirubin this lipid soluble bilirubin is also known as pre unconjugated bilirubin because it is without binding protein it is the micromolecule cell so there is chances of leaking out into tissue when there is chances of leaking out into tissue it may damage your tissue it may damage your tissue so nature has created a nature, nature has created a special type of protein from your liver which is known as trapping protein or bilirubin binding protein now this bilirubin binding protein continues to release into your circulation and this bilirubin binding protein or trapping protein will will trap on your unconjugated bilirubin and it will make the macromolecule so the chances of leaking out into your tissue will be finished so chances of because it is a toxic molecule so there will be no damaging occur now this bilirubin binding or plasma unconjugated bilirubin is has receptor on the head sinusoidal side now this unconjugated bilirubin plasma unconjugated bilirubin will enter into your liver where it will enter this will enter this will enter into your liver bilirubin binding unconjugated bilirubin binding unconjugated bilirubin will enter into your liver by your sinusoidal side will en enter into your liver so it will enter into your endoplasmic reticulum you know that a special type of enzyme which is produced continuously by endoplasmic reticulum by metabolism of the glucose glucuronic acid what is the type of enzyme which is known as gt glucuronic acid glucuronic or glucuronic acid or uh, glucuronyl transferase enzyme glucuronyl transferase enzyme which is most abundantly present in your endoplasmic reticulum in the endoplasmic reticulum this bilirubin or unconjugated bilirubin will convert into your conjugated conjugated bilirubin which is known as more polar which is water soluble now this water soluble conjugated bilirubin has special tra uh, transporter on your kelly kelly nucleural site or chemicular site has a receptor this conjugated bilirubin will enter here into your biliary nucleus system and by the from bilateral from right hepatic duct and from right and left hepatic duct it will enter your cystic duct and now it is will it will convert into common bile duct and from common bile duct it will enter this is ampulla pancreatic duct and from ampulla of beta it will enter your what where it will yes, enter into your duodenum it will enter your enter your duodenum when the un, when the conjugated bilirubin enter the duodenum enter the by ampulla of beta it will enter uh into your duodenum by may, there are many bacteria in your intestine special type of in your bacterial protease in them which can what the uh, conjugated bilirubin into uraenium bilirubin out of 
out of this, 10% will be reabsorbed again, it will enter your sinusoidal, it will reproduce cell, it will enter your circulation. Now this urinobiology which is not limited, so it is water soluble, so it will leak out, it will expel out by